Hello from Gardening at Dwensa here in Ireland and welcome back to my mini series. And in this series I bring to you 30 wonderful perennials that are perfectly hardy in my garden. I talk all about them and hopefully entice you to try them out wherever you're situated. Now today we're going to talk about Ligularia or the leopard plant and some particular favourites of mine. Now, why do I grow Ligularia? And I think you can see from what's behind me how gorgeous this plant actually is. Now, its claim to fame is these tall yellow or orange flowers. I don't know if you'd call these orange. I wouldn't. I'd say they're yellow. And they make a dramatic statement in the border. They have brown centres as well, which is very good for matching with the dark foliage that these plants very often have. And in a minute I'll get on to the different types of Ligularia I've grown and the pros and cons of each and every one of them. So how do we grow Ligularia? And this is a plant that needs full sun or partial shade. It's one that does prefer moist soil. So if you've got a boggy area where things don't drain very well, then that might be the perfect spot for growing some Ligularia. And it's quite hardy. Hardy from zones 3 to 8, I believe. It's certainly very hardy, perfectly hardy here in my garden. Now, you do need a sheltered spot for it as well. But a very, very rewarding plant. It's a herbaceous plant. It dies down in autumn. I usually cut it back in spring, maybe about February time. And it just so happens I made a video about that a little while ago, which I'll link to at the end of this. So cut it back in spring and at that point in time, keep an eye out for slugs because this plant, if anything, is a martyr for slugs. And anyone who has a garden where their hostas suffer a lot from slug bites, then you probably can't grow Ligularia because I think that slugs love Ligularia even more than they love hostas. But the main thing is to protect them round about February time, usually with some kind of barrier method, because if you protect the plants at that point in time, once they get a little bit taller, round about March, about so high, then the slugs don't bother with them anymore. And really, you're good for the rest of the summer. But, of course, if the slugs munch the leaves too badly, once the plant has gotten going and you're past spring, what you can always do is just remove any damaged leaves in the same way you might with the hosta. Now, the Ligularia leaves, you can't really just pull them off because if you do, then you will very often end up with a kind of stringy stem like that that isn't very attractive. So use the secateurs. So my three favourite Ligularia are number one, this one behind me, Brit Marie Crawford. And it's a wonderful Ligularia with large dark leaves and these tall flowers that make a statement later on in the season. It usually flowers kind of the end of July, beginning of August. Now, the great thing about this particular variety is that it tolerates drier soil than some of the others. So actually I have this plant growing in quite a dry position and it does really well for me. The only thing that is a drawback is that it does seed and the seedlings don't come true to the parent. So the seedlings can end up with kind of greenish leaf. So the best thing is to weed those out and then you know and then you can make sure that your dark leafed one has predominance in the border. The second Ligularia I want to talk about that I grow here at Duenza is a species one and it was named after a Polish gentleman. I'm not going to try and pronounce it now but you'll see the name going up there on the screen. And this is one that I really love because of the shape of its leaves. Now the leaves are green which is a bit of a drawback as far as I'm concerned but they're that unusual that it makes a nice addition to the border. The downside of this particular plant is that it really does need moisture. So if I get drought in my garden, this is the one that's going to suffer and going to suffer a lot. 
it produces tall spires of yellow flowers as opposed to you know the kind of daisy like ones that Brit Mary Crawford produces and the bees love it but the bees love all of the ligularias and finally my favorite of all ligularias is one called Osiris Cafe Noir and it's a Canadian hybrid that well it's just wonderful it's got really really dark leaves and they have a kind of serrated edge a much more attractive shape than Brit Mary Crawford and it produces the same kind of daisy like yellow or orange flowers now this one also is kind of drought tolerant as far as I found in my garden and it does well now I'm sure it would thrive better in a more moist environment and wouldn't get kind of like crisping at the edges of the leaves later in the season but it does well for me and that's that's really good okay so I think I've kind of covered all the aspect of care except to say that propagation of these plants is by division certainly for the cultivars that I've mentioned I guess you might try and collect seed for the one with the Polish species name but I haven't tried it myself so I can't say now Brit Mary Crawford as we know produces seed and seedlings but they're not true to the parent so it's not a good way to get more of the same plant right so that kind of brings me to the end of this video about Ligularia which I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found useful and if you don't grow this in your own garden perhaps you consider trying especially if you have a moist boggy environment it's really going to thrive there and even if you're a bit on the dry side like me try one of them try Brit Mary Crawford perhaps and see how she goes for you I hope you'll check back soon to see more videos in this series of my month of perennials where I'll talk about 30 different perennials. Some of those videos are already on YouTube and there are more to come. In the meantime, have a great day and see you again soon. Bye!